is all about the buzz. The dryer buzz. On News and Talk 1380, WAOK. Hey, what's the Killer Mike? Killer Mike telling you dryer buzz on WAOK. That's right, WAOK 1380. Suckers. Call us at 404-892-2703. On News and Talk 1380, WAOK. Let's talk about the Oscars, but I got a great guest in here. She's got to get back to Bronner Brothers. So, Sadiq, I'm going to still grab your call, but let me introduce my introduce my guest. And let me just, just check and make sure your, your mic is on for me right there. Just say hello, everybody. Hello, everyone. All right. Now, this is Kay Fluellen. Now, we met last year at Brown the Brothers, and I told Kay, I didn't know. I, I told Kay I wanted to get her, her story on the radio. I didn't know that I would be the one sitting here to get a chance to interview her. What a difference a year makes, right? I know. What a difference a year makes. <laughs> and see, this is what happens when you trust uh, sources, you know, and I always say when the lion trusts its storyteller, the hunter will no longer have the better part of the story. She had to trust me because I walked up to her booth last year and said, Sister, I got some connections. You got a great book. And she gave me a book because, you know, it's real hard to get, get folk to give you stuff. But, but she trusts, she knew I had some buzz and she gave me her book, an excellent book called The Main Attraction. Mm-hmm. Lots of information in there. And, and one of the reasons I, I when I saw you and I, I checked to see if you were going to be in town for Brown and Brothers is because this week alone, uh, Nene Leakes um, was on the Meredith show. And it sent me, and I woke up in the middle of the night and caught the replay. Okay. Okay. And it sent me into a tweet hizzy because <laughs> she was trying to explain, you know, Nene wears some bad hair. I, I ain't going to lie. We ain't seen Nene pretty much yet in some good hair. But she was trying to. Um, And she blew Meredith's mind, but she was trying to explain, I guess somebody said to her that the blonde that she's wearing makes her look like a white female. Mm -hmm. So it it became a a black blonde, white blonde type situation. And the way she was trying to explain, I said, okay, she doesn't have a decent argument. Because as as sisters, I mean, we drive the trend when it comes to hair. That's the first argument we should be able to explain as to why we choose the looks, the hair, the color, the attitude, the atmosphere. All of that, uh, even um, Viola Davis. Yes, I felt like she didn't have a good true argument. She was on. We, in fact, this video is 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 being circulated around Facebook right now. Where is Viola Davis uh, and Anders Anthony? An- no, An- An- Anthony Anderson. What is his name on oh, CNN? Anderson. Anderson Cooper. Anderson Cooper yes. is asking Viola Davis about why when she chose to wear her natural hair on the carpet, why it th- became a controversy. People forget this generation. Now, some people have been rocking natural hair forever because we were born with it. Um, but then you had this growth of natural hair and some people are coming. One of the reasons our generation is, is come the way our generation is coming into natural hair is because our mother's generation uh, was all about pressing mm-hmm. our hair. Mm-hmm. Okay, so a lot of women just really didn't know the texture of their hair because your mother was pressing it since before you could even knew you had hair. All you knew was that pain and suffering is coming, but you're going to look good afterwards. So we just seem to not have a good argument. If somebody said, Yolanda, well, why do you wear a chop? I got a good argument for that. One is time. This is my confidence style, meaning uh, as a blogger, if I got to go jump on a red carpet or whatever, and I ain't got time to go sit in right. for 45 minutes, I got to be able to go. And with this hair, I know I can go with confidence wherever I need to go. Why is it that so many women, as long as we've been rocking, I mean, Bronner Brothers is in there, what, 30-something years? No, Bronner Brothers has been in business now, like, uh, it's been a long time. It's been a long like time, six, but I think yeah. it's like the 38th or something uh, hair show. Yeah. How is it that we at this time don't have a good argument when it comes to our hair and how we explore hair? You know what? I think that that is interesting because hair is so much a part of who we are. Mm-hmm. Um, we are, we are, I, that's the first thing that most people see when they see us. They see our that's face, the they thing. see mm-hmm. our hair, and hair is such a true expression of who we are. And then here's the deal. And if our hair doesn't look good, if we're having a bad hair day, nine times out of ten, that's a bad day for us. Right. So our hair means so much to us. And still, um, and I think that because our hair is such a qualifier of who we are and what we represent, it, then we have there are so many issues around our hair um so i as 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 the hair maven i am always promoting hair health i'm always pr- promoting awareness of who we are are by the identity of our hair and 
I think it takes conversation like this. So thank you, Yolanda, for just being concerned enough about our community just to just bring this up in a conversation. Because I'm all about women, first of all, having confidence. Absolutely. You know, and, and I do a lot of networking. And I, I can see you can, when a woman has a bad hair day, you can tell she don't want to be talked to. She don't <laughs> be bothered. I'm invisible. Right. My hair ain't right. Even though you still may think she's rocking it, if she doesn't feel it, it just the confidence won't come through. Absolutely. Won't come through. All right, we got to take a break. 404-892-2703. It's the Arts and Culture edition of Dry Your Buzz on WLK. More on News and Talk 1380 with Kay Fluell and the Hair Maven. 1380 WAOK. Go now to DryerBuzz.com and follow at DryerBuzz on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. It's all about the buzz on News and Talk 1380 WAOK. This is Martin Pratt, a.k.a. I Love Black Women, I-L-U-B Black Women, on Twitter and everywhere else. I love listening to Dry and Buzz on W-A-O-K. Call us at 404-892-2703 on News and Talk 1380, W-A-O-K. Actually, we got some Twitter questions about something I want to ask you, because you, um, on, a, on the red carpet for Oscars last year, you changed uh, your look, kind of, and it seemed to flip people out. Like, people were writing about this, blogging about this, and Gabby, um, at the uh, the Olympics recently, when she did really well, I also saw people commenting about, like, her hair and stuff, and I just thought it really odd that people notice this so much. Do, do you find it strange that people comment on how you appear so much? No, because I'm an African-American woman, and there is not enough time on the show to explain hair issues. <laughs> <laughs> No, that being said, I took off my hair, I took off my wig, because um, I wanted to step into who I was. Hmm. All right, you're back with more Dryer Buzz on WLK. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to give you a good argument today, because that was not a good argument. That was not a good argument about, about your hair. When she said, I took off my wig, we talked about this on a couple shows, and we're going to continue to talk about it, because today we got Kay Fluell and the Hair Maven in here to give you that good argument, and we're going to talk about it because we the Oscars are tonight, we got some red carpet controversies, but when Viola says, again, I took off my wig because I wanted to step into myself, how are we supposed to feel when she put the wig back on? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> you don't want to be yourself no more? But see, the thing about it is, it really should not have mattered. When she stepped on that red carpet, regardless of her hair, it should have gone unnoticed. That shouldn't have been a thing that we talked about. Right. And and what we're trying to get you to a point of understanding is that we as African-American women need to stop owning these stereotypes because the, the white female on the, on the left of us, the Hispanic woman on the right of us, just like sitting on that carpet, Rosie Perez might have had in a few tracks, and surely the, the white female next to her had a head, head full of tracks. They, they mm-hmm. apply them differently. Right. We, we look at them and think that's their hair. We look at because because in our mind we're thinking we're adding these tracks because I think m- women really do want to look like them. So when Nene had that controversial conversation on the Meredith show, as the people telling her she wearing white hair, uh, it's real. It's real. Why is it so real? Well, here's the thing. I have a statement that I say all the time, and I say to people, "God made you beautiful. I just help you own that beauty." So as a, as women, our ultimate goal is just to kind of having enhancements to help us own our own sense of beauty, our own sense of, but all of that comes from within all of us. So our ultimate goal should be to work on our inner self so that we can feel this inner beauty and then just portray it through enhancements. So as a stylist, you should concentrate on your stylist or your hair or whatever, just for enhancement purposes. So like when Yolanda talked about wearing her hair short, that's her own self, her own personal space for confidence. But our goal is what is it that we can do? And whatever that is, we need to be trying to get to our confident self. We need to be trying to get to our best self so we can feel good about ourselves. So if that is you can wear your natural hair and it makes you feel good about who you are, then great on that. But if you want to add a little enhancements to your hair and make your hair a little longer or a little thicker, that's okay. And it doesn't make you white or less black or whatever, because the truth is we have people of all nationalities that's Mm -hmm. adding hair. We have people of all nationalities doing things for enhancement. So our goal is is just to enhance ourselves. And and when Kate goes back to Texas, y'all, I'm going to steal her hairstyle. But, um, But why is it that? 
other cultures, it's, it's something about there's a there's a cloud of shame over us. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've been, I think I've been trying. I've been blogging. My, my site is called Dryer Buzz. It was born in the hair salon, but I never got on the truly never truly got on the natural hair bandwagon because I saw some issues there that women had as to why they wanted to quote unquote go natural. Mm -hmm. I mean, the whole conversation, it, it just never really sat well with me. And now to see this playing out on the red carpet, but why is it that other cultures don't have, and they have their own issues, but why is it that they can do it freely, but with us, it has a cloud of shame. You know, I don't know where the shame comes from, but I can tell you that it's it's dated because mm -hmm. I, I I mean, I'm a hairstylist, so I've studied the history of hair for a long time. And probably my my biggest person that I like to quote a lot is uh, Madam C.J. Walker. Mm -hmm. And when she first kind of stepped on the scene in, in the early 1920s and 30s, um, she would kind of really introduced and popularized the pressing comb mm -hmm. and, and the pressing hair. Mm -hmm. So. Even then, when she was pressing African-American women hair, they didn't have relaxers. She was just pressing their hair. And there were huge arguments. And the intellectual intellectuals of that day were saying that the people who bothered to press their hair were trying to look white. Mm -hmm. So that goes back to there. And then even when you look back, like when we start talking about the slavery or whatever, mm -hmm. slavery, the, 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 the issue of slavery, people who had straighter hair, a lot of times they were allowed to come into the house and they had a mm -hmm. raise, a higher position. So because the, the, the slave master felt like, oh, he or she is a little privileged because she looks a little closer like me or mm -hmm. her hair is a little straighter and she right. looks a little better so maybe that issue That's goes the all the way mm -hmm. back to slavery where if your hair was the word that they use was nappy so mm -hmm. if your hair was nappy and and then you were delegated to be in the fields okay so that's that's where the shame comes from because nobody ever said to them that at the same time at the same time at the same time black women were going to get their hair pressed white women were really going to get their hair pressed so why don't we equate us getting our hair pressed to them getting uh the blowout what, mm -hmm. what do they call it now because they go now and still get their hair pressed oh yeah they week, get right? a sickening they get silkening treatments or right. they call them straighteners and exactly. so they call them straighteners and they're getting a keratin treatments to help keep their hair straight so that it doesn't frizz up and look mm -hmm. curly or wavy so yes they're doing it just as it, much as the, we are at the same yes. time yes and so it's just some kind of way with us it's like we keep ending up with these with these shame issues all right well, i do want to talk about the red carpet controversy so let's go and get sadiq sadiq want to talk a little bit more about the oscars so we're going to throw oscars up in here as well as we try to talk about the the cunt the hair red carpet controversies hi sadiq how are you greetings yolanda uh good information as always i didn't really want to talk about it but since it's the topic and i love your show Thank i you. decided to call and give my opinion about it. <laughs> uh, Opinions are good all, here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, first of all, uh, Brother called uh, maybe about three callers ago, and he said he didn't agree with Al Sharpton on this one. Well, you got to understand who Al Sharpton is. I mean, the brother's done some great things. Jesse Jackson has done some great things. Our good deeds outweigh our bad, but you got to understand who Al is and dissect him for who he is, and you'll understand why he's always in things like this. The Oscars, it's mm -hmm. a system not for us. It's a system not for us, so I don't know why we keep trying to fit in the system that's not for us. You know, we have enough money in this country now. It's not, aggra it's not aggravated money, though. Mm -hmm. We have a few potholes of millionaires, a couple of billionaires now, and we don't aggr aggregate our money, so we right. are... In the same position that we were in probably in 18 more well, in 1865 you know mm -hmm. so i think we have we as a people we have to stop being distracted by what these are uh, the media which mm -hmm. is uh really really it's 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 the propaganda to keep people's mind uh illusioned i should say especially black folks you and it's know? working it's working it's absolutely, uh, absolutely. working mm -hmm. absolutely yolanda it's working um I use the phrase all the time, and people ask me, "Oh, Sadiq, why you? Why? What do you mean?" I say we're losing the race. I said we almost to the point now, Yolanda, and this is real talk, that we almost losing a whole generation because of their behavior. Now, my thing is, because I always try to give a solution. If Al Sharpton, Jesse Jackson, I'm getting ready to go into this uh, Savior's Day and listen to Minister Farrakhan speak. If they're not teaching our kids to love themselves, to understand who they are. 
that that once they get that, it would transform their behavior. Now they won't call each other that n word when they're on the basketball court when they're in the school. But by the way, most of our kids go to school for a fashion show. Asian kids go to educate themselves. European kids go to educate themselves. Mm-hmm. Latino kids who came here yesterday go to educate themselves. Right. Our kids go for a fashion show. See, my mama bought me. See, my daddy bought me. But never do they they compete. Academically. Academically. So, All right, Sadiq, I'm sorry, baby. I got to go to break. I do appreciate you calling and supporting the show. He called in at 404 892 We come back. We're going to continue to talk about these red carpet controversies and why it's such a level of shame when we experiment with our hair, when everybody, every other culture out there is doing exactly the same thing. More on News and Talk 1380 WAOK. Get Dryer Buzz on SoundCloud and YouTube to hear snippets from the show. It's all about the buzz with Dryer Buzz on News and Talk 1380 WAOK. News and Talk 13. Hashtag Hair She Buzz. Get the buzz behind the buzz with Yolanda Lattimore with Dryer Buzz on News and Talk 1380 WAOK. This is Dr. Charles H. Jackson, Sr. of the Impact Project, encouraging you to be vocal, victorious over cancer and in life, and also listen to the buzz on News and Talk 1380 WAOK. Call us at 404-892-2703 on News and Talk 1380 WAOK. All right, you're back, Dryer Buzz on WAOK. If you're just listening for the first time because all your friends are tweeting about it because they're using the hashtag Dryer Buzz, uh, this is Dryer Buzz on WAOK. It's where blogging comes to radio. 13 years. I think we celebrate 13 years come March the 13th. Ooh, I got to make sure I do that big, right? Okay. Right. <laughs> We've been uh, blogging about Atlanta, and we, we talk a little bit about here, um, but mainly what you get at Dryer Buzz is the conversations we normally have under the dryer and in mm-hmm. the salons because we get to let our hair down and, and, and really talk about issues that are concerned to us. Uh, I had to bring in Kay Fluell and the hair maven, the author of the uh, main M-A-N-E attraction because – I want women, especially black women, to have a good argument, uh, a, a, a good position, some a good convictions. You when you have to stand on edge about stand on edges about mm-hmm. your hair. Yeah. I mean, and I don't understand why this remains to be a pressing issue. Uh, Kay and I were talking about where the shame comes from, and you know, Kay, I think it comes from the fact of of we just don't carry. Our, our heritage, our lineage, mm-hmm. you know, I shouldn't, there's, n- one of the things that I did say uh, throughout on social media, whenever people try to pull me into the, the natural hair Nazi debates, mm-hmm. right. I usually say, I know, I know my history, therefore I know my hair. Mm-hmm. I know my hair, therefore I know my history. Mm-hmm. Because you can take a strand of your hair and get your entire history. Absolutely. Okay? So I just feel like we should have, we should be able to, if it's one thing that we should be able to have a good debate about is our hair. I know my mother. Mm-hmm. I know my grandmother. I know the difference between their hair and I know my father. And I know the combination of all of these folk is why I got the hair that I got. Why I got the color that I got, so which is why I transferred to the color that I have. Mm-hmm. So it's the color I was born with that for some reason my mother and father getting together. I'm like, hey, this is the color of my hair. But luckily, we get to wear any shade, any hue that we want to. Mm-hmm. But there are some women out there, namely Nene Leakes. <laughs> um, she feels like, and, and, and there's nothing wrong with it. Blonde is her confidence. That's good for her. Blonde is her confidence. Now, now Nene will put on a bad wig of blonde. She mm-hmm. put in some bad blonde tracks. I'm going in. <laughs> and and still, you know, and still be mm-hmm. confident. But what yes. I felt like this week with what we saw on the Meredith show, uh, when asked to explain uh, her, the shades, the wigs, and so forth, she just didn't have a good argument. Mm-hmm. We saw on the Anderson Cooper show that Viola Davis just didn't have a good argument. How do we give women a good, we can give them confidence. Because mm-hmm. we can put hair down in their back. We can make them look good. But how do we make sure that when they open their mouth? Right. They know what to say as it relates to their hair. My, I think that everybody, what I would say to that person, whoever that is, is looking for a good argument. You do whatever works best for you. And that is, if being natural works best for you, 
great. That's what you do. And if that's what makes you comfortable, if that puts you in your comfortable place, but for whatever reason, you chose short because the timing issue, because of what your lifestyle is like. Mm -hmm. For some people, they choose straight. And it's not about fitting in or to look like somebody else. For some people, they choose straight because this is just easier for me. I can make this work better. So we have um, other nationalities. They change their hair color all the time. Many of the blonde eyed, blue hair, blue, blue eyed, blonde hair people that you see, that's not natural. They ch- they make their hair blonde and we have no conversation about it. But when we choose to change the color of our hair, hey, it's out there. Everything that we do is about enhancement and it's about doing what makes you feel good. And so whatever that is and whatever you need, the conversation needs to be I'm doing what makes me feel good. So if my natural makes me feel good, mm. then more power to you, sister. I love it. And see, that's the thing about it. If somebody asks you about your hair, just say I'm doing what makes me feel good. Don't blink. Right. Don't disclaim it. Don't even give any more explanation. I'm doing what makes me. And had Nene said that, I'd have been just sitting there watching the mirror to show. But because she said all this other stuff, I was like, oh, Lord, I got to tweet 3 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> because, I, because I knew it was damaging to somebody else, to other, to other women. It's yes. like if she is at the pinnacle of, quote, unquote, rich success, if she's at that place and that's her argument, then God knows what other people are thinking. I'm all about empowering women. And like I said, y'all, I can't wait for Kay to get on this plane because her hair is rocking now. Suppose, okay, I want to steal your hairstyle. Okay. Okay, but I, I don't want to I don't want to perm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what do I do? How do I go from my natural curl to I, I, I get to rock what Kay got on? Well, if your hair was a little longer, you can just go straight with, we could just flat iron your hair and, and make it do that. So okay. I can do, I have a lot of clients who are natural, who, who I just mostly straighten it with the flat mm-hmm. iron and then they have they have the same look of as rela- relax or whatever so now that's long, what we how long would that last so with the flat iron it, it depends on your lifestyle okay on and lifestyle. so and that totally depends and depends on the lifestyle and depends on where you are mm-hmm. because like obviously if you're in florida and it's very humid it's not going to last as well as if you were maybe here or even in texas where mm-hmm. it's not not as humid so it just depends on where you are that's well, now let's talk about that because i do want to make some kind of transition this year because I've, I've rocked this pretty much for the past 19 years. And, you know, when you go to Brown Brothers show, you see all this hair and it's flowing. And I'm like, I kind of miss it. And Derek, of course, threw me under the bus. I co-hosted the show yesterday with Derek Bolson. He threw me under the bus and he said, okay, I, you know, he wants to thinks I should try something different. And I think I should. Sometimes I see Michelle Obama and I used to have hair like that. I was like, mm-hmm. you know, I kind of miss it. So if I was going to transition and I wanted to also still stay within certain time limits, like just in case I get called to go interview this person and I need to be out of the house in 15 minutes. Most of the time I have to be out of the house in 15 minutes. What, is, what are some of the things that I could do? Well, first of all, I still would say I think because I'm just looking at your hair and the texture of your hair, mm-hmm. because you have color and because you're talking about still having the flexibility with your hair, mm-hmm. I still would suggest that you, would, that you were natural. And I would suggest that while it was growing, you can just blow it out and you can wear it straight. And then you can also wear your cur- your natural curl pattern. Mm-hmm. You can, And then that gives you a lot more flexibility with color. Mm-hmm. So you can, because once you get a relaxer, it really limits what you can do with color. Right. Okay. So, but if you want to have, still have fun with color, that gives you a lot more flexibility because you can run the gamut with color if you don't have any relaxer on your mm-hmm. hair. But we can give you a whole bunch of versatility. So that's why I still say, I don't get what, why people are having these conversations because we can have so much versatility and so much fun with, with our hair. Hair. And hair is all about expression and it's all about who you are. I just, again, I'm coming right back to my first statement mm-hmm. that is, Yolanda, just do you. Just do me and don't blink. Do, just do you and don't blink. Let me ask you this now. And, and this is this is just me, okay? I find that in my natural state, okay, if I let my coils get longer, mm-hmm. my intuition gets stronger. You think? Yeah. Sometimes I sometimes I have to cut it because I be knowing too much. <laughs> it's like okay, I'm seeing too much. I'm experiencing. If I if I let it, and normally I try to like let it. At some point during the year, I like try to like let it grow out. Mm-hmm. But I find that the longer it get, it's like my sensibilities change. What is that? Do you know who Naturally Isis is? No. Naturally Isis is from Dallas, mm-hmm. and she does Erica Badu's hair. Okay. And she's a um, natural hair care specialist. Mm-hmm. And she, and her her. I I heard her statement often is uh, she says that 
our natural coils are like our DNA or it's like b- little antennas to yeah. connect to um, higher higher powers. That's her statement. That's what okay, she believes. Yeah. And so, um, you know, there are a lot of people who really buy into that. I don't know. I don't know okay. because I don't wear my hair naturally. I wear relaxed it, hair. It is, it is but something. Let me tell a, you. A naturally Isis always says that your hair is like antennas that connect you closer to God. Okay. All right. Now, I know you guys got to run because you got a booth over at Bronner Brothers. Tell everybody um, what's in your booth and where's your booth. And then when you get back to Texas, what they need to hook you up with Well, you. I, I'm in a salon. I'm a hairstylist. And when I'm in a salon, I'm just doing my clients. When I'm out of the salon, my whole mission is like in life is to empower women so that they can take care of their hair. Obviously, I can't be everybody's hairstylist. Mm-hmm. But what I want to do is for those of, the, those of you who can't come to Texas and sit in my chair, I'd like to give you enough information so that you can be empowered to take care of your hair that's why i wrote the book a main attraction and it's all about empowering women so that they can have all the tools that they need to be able to take care of their hair um when i'm in the booth over there i've done, i'm teaching some classes on color and hair care and i have some videos that i'm selling to other stylists and just kind of training stylists on ha- hairstyles and hair wow. styling and maintaining healthy hair wow so even though you're still beyond the chair still behind the chair you figured out how to get beyond on the chair as an author and then you're doing instructions and everything. Okay, give everybody your website. Okay, my website is uh, kflewellen.com or the Hair Maven because that's easier to find. The Hair Maven.com. You can find me on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram at kflewellen. That's K F L E W E L L E N. And you can find okay. me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Okay, so this time on the red carpet, when somebody asks Viola, What's she doing with her hair? She should say, she's doing me. She, I'm doing me. I'm doing I'm me. doing what makes me Don't feel blink. good. Don't give no disclaimer. Just do you. Hashtag hair. She buzz. All right. More on News and Talk 1380 WAOK. News and Talk 1380 WAOK.